Hello, welcome back into Weather Nation. We're showing you some incredible footage of the sail drones covering Hurricane Fiona out into the Atlantic Ocean. Man, look how mean the waves are. We appreciate all the instruments that we have in place to help us just see what's going on out in the middle of the ocean from a different standpoint. Obviously, we have the Hurricane Hunters. We also have another technology here to check out to see things from much of a lower level. Let's bring in Mr. Matt Womble. He, uh, he works with the Sail Drones. And, and Matt, it's great to be talking with you on this afternoon. Just talk about, I noticed this is you all's uh, second year using, utilizing the Sail Drones and, 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 and capturing uh, tropical storms, also hurricanes. Talk about what you all do and talk about your partnership with NOAA. Yeah, thanks for having me here today. Um, so as you mentioned, this is our second year uh, consecutively of uh, putting out sail drones to help NOAA with its hurricane forecast uh, improvement work. Um, our vehicles are uh, completely renewable powered uncrewed surface vehicles that use wind for propulsion and solar to power onboard sensors. Um, they're equipped with a variety of sensors for meteorological data collection and oceanographic data collection. That's uh, important data for NOAA to have and anticipate in both in advance of and in the midst of these uh, incredible tropical storms and tropical systems that we see here, like Hurricane Fiona, to help them improve uh, their both their track forecast and their intensification forecast. All right, Matt, now another thing we was talking about before we started here was the timing and the placements of where you all decide to place these sail drones. Talk about, you know, how you all decide ahead of time where exactly to place these sail drones. Also talk about how long it takes for you all to do this and how you all just all of a sudden just can't take sail drones, for example, and send them up to Canada, for example, to capture Fiona there as it heads there this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's a uh, it's it's nearly a full year's planning effort. We're already uh, having some initial discussions with Noah about what next year's potential hurricane mission look like. Um, so it's definitely a time intensive effort. Uh, this year we have seven vehicles that have been deployed and have been actively staged in uh, offshore areas, both in the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. So we have five vehicles in different places uh, in, in different operational areas in the Atlantic Ocean, and two vehicles in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, those vehicles, as I said, they've been staged out there collecting uh, valuable observational data in advance of hurricanes, so helping to uh, provide both uh, spatially relevant and time, timely relevant um, meteorological and oceanographic data in advance of storms, but also positioning them in places where um, known tropical systems are known to transit to do exactly what you see the vehicle uh, uh, doing here, which is intercepting and getting very close to the storm and getting within the storm to help collect data from within hurricanes. Another question I have for you, Matt, is also I know this is you all's uh, second year uh, utilizing the sail drone program. Talk about, you know, what, what were some of the uh, lessons learned uh, that you all had from the first year and things you all want to make better for the second year? Yeah, so we really try to uh, have the systems pretty pretty well, um, uh, pretty similar to how they are in previous years. It allows us to both have comparisons of observations and comparisons across the across the drones themselves. So not a lot of changes were made between last year and this year. Uh, certainly some improvements, some lessons learned that we uh, garnered from last year whenever we intercepted Hurricane Sam. Uh, some minor adjustments to help help the vehicles better perform. The biggest notice, the biggest thing to note about a hurricane drones is. Um, they're equipped with a what we call a hurricane wing. It's a smaller, stubbier uh, wing that gives both the vehicles a, a lower center of gravity to help uh, in these uh, very treacherous conditions you're seeing on the screen here, um, better operation. And so that's really the big research and development uh, component of this mission from a sail drone perspective is to continuing to develop the, the this different wing technology than we use on some of our other drones to help enable observations from within uh, the worst uh, meteorological conditions you can experience on the oceans. All right, Matt, um, is there anything else just about some of the footage that you all gather along with Fiona or just uh, you all about the program going forward to the future that you'd like to add that we didn't get a chance to ask you about? Uh, now, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. We're excited that uh, we were able to, again, uh, have a sail drone intercept the storm and collect this important data. Uh, appreciate your coverage of it and uh, look forward to uh, continuing discussions as the hurricane season progresses on. All right, Mr. Womble, thank you so much. Appreciate all of your insight. And of course, we'll know we'll be definitely hearing back from you later on for the rest of this hurricane season. Let's get you over to Viper with the latest of what's ongoing this afternoon across the country.